Hello and welcome to the next part of my Morrowind Guide series. Uh, today I'm going to be talking through the mechanics of melee combat. Uh, this does also apply for ranged combat if you're using a bow or throwing weapons. Um, but the, the melee side of things is probably the easiest way to demonstrate. So I'm going to take our uh, good old trusty red guard. Great. I'm sure you'll fit right in. Follow me up to the office and they'll finish your release. And we'll uh, head on through and do the cat creation uh, yes, bit. Yes, we've been expecting you. Uh, you'll have to be recorded before you're officially released. There are a few ways we can do this and the choice is yours. So, as I said on the previous one, I'm going to go with endurance, got block, uh, heavy armor, long blade and enchant and what I'm also going to do is keep blunt weapon axe I'll take short blade spear and we'll ignore these other two this isn't I'm not going to be playing through the game with this character I just want to demonstrate different weapons and how weapon skill and everything else affects them so very good the letter that proceeded you mentioned you were born under a certain sign and what would that be? So again, we'll take the lover. So we've got that bonus to uh, strength, endurance, and agility. Papers, make sure this information is correct. So, 60 strength, 65 agility, 60 endurance. Got 50 long blade, 40 blunt, 20 short blade, 25 axe, 20 spear. So... Show your papers to the captain when you exit to get your release fee. Alright, so obviously you can if you want take the lineware platter. In fact, I think I'll do that just so I can buy some stuff. Me for a fool. Continue through to the next building and talk to Salus Gravius. We'll do it with the uh, menu open. Okay. Just come through here quickly. And what we'll do is we'll put the lineware platter in there. Grab the engraved ring of healing. Get through with those. Morrowind duties. Okay, and What's this about? you can also get access to the customs warehouse where you can loot some more stuff by taking this key. Now, if you take it like this, you're not going to get a chance to put, drop it before he uh, grabs you. But if you have your infantry open, like we did with the limeware platter, you can drop it on the floor. You can grab other things as well if you want. Silverware plates are worth quite a bit. There we go. Yes. We'll pick that up and he just doesn't care. We'll go back and grab our lineware platter. If we had the lineware platter on us when he uh, stopped us from stealing, then uh, I don't actually need anything from here. Then uh, he'd take the lineware platter off of us. So we'll give the ring to Fargoth. Ring. Yes. So if there that's, is anything I can do, I am humbly at your service. That's going to give us a nice little bonus with a reel, so we can sell the limeware platter. You've piqued my interest. Please share your thoughts. So sell that. Alright, so we can pick up a long blade, a short blade, and an axe. I will grab a spear and a mace. There we go. What's this about? And then I'll show you what's available in the customs Do warehouse. The honor, so over here, got some heavy armor, including a shield. Got some more weapons, so I could have just stolen a spear, but yeah, whatever. Some people don't like thieving, so what I'll do is I'll grab the shield. Which does affect your total armor bonus. And then up here we've got some more. We've got a medium helm. And some imperial steel. Um, a helm and boots. Uh, okay, he's not looking. I will grab the greaves as well. Oh, he's upstairs. I just saw the shadow. Right, so, we have a spear. 
We can come over here and get an axe. It's enchanted. If we just jump off here onto the top of this log, and then you can sort of get hold of the handle. Right. Oh, getting a bit stuck. No, can't let me go that way. Let's go this way. So next up, we want to go and get ourselves a nice little enchanted short sword. If that's what you want, or, well, short blade, I should say. It's a dagger. Uh, if that's the way you want to go, I can show you where that is. And then we'll get into the actual fight mechanics. We'll go and kill some mud crabs because everyone wants to take part in the great mud crab genocide. So if we head on up, just going to follow this path around, and we can get ourselves a dagger and a long sword. We get the dagger first, so in another tree stump. Just over here. I'm not going to bother with the gold, because again, I'm not playing this character through. And then we'll uh, go and watch Tar Heel fall out of the sky. When he spawns in. There we go. And we'll take the spark sword. So I'm not going to worry about anything else. And I'll rest get my fatigue back. Oh! So as you can see, Die. even with no fatigue, I'm still hitting you most of the time with my agility of 65 and my long blade skill of 50. And this is at level 1. And I quite happily took down an assassin. So. And another one. Okay, so we... We can demonstrate now the, uh, the the great weapon. Now, as you see, two-handed weapons do attack slower, and I've got a much lower skill, so I'm missing more frequently. And we'll rest again. So that shows you the difference that the 20, difference in 25 skill points will make when it comes to hitting. Also demonstrates the difference in the attack speed. Now, it does state the attack speed on here. You see, it's speed 100%. Whereas if you go to, say, the dagger, speed 200%. The long sword, speed 135%. Spear, speed 100%. And 130 for the iron mace. So, now that you've seen those in action, uh, walk over to this mud crab just so I can retain my uh, fatigue and so we'll go with spear next because we've only got a 20 bonus in that but it will show how far away you can actually attack with a spear due to the extra reach so we'll just creep up on it go so even though its damage is only 5 to 20 we still were able to one shot the mud crab All right, let's uh, go back to running again and finally we'll go with the dagger now the dagger again we've only got a 20 weapon skill in this so we're not going to hit anywhere near as frequently as we did with the long sword 
and we've got a much shorter reach with it. And we're going to get our fatigue down a bit. Not much. As you see, swinging wildly, hardly able to hit. Because again, our, our weapon skill is, with short blades, it's only 20. And the damage on it is very low. So 3 to 3 on all the different types of attack. Uh, it does have 3 to 5 fire damage. Now, one thing I will suggest, I think this is in options here, under controls. No. This is preference. Yeah, there we go. Under prefs. Uh, preferences. Always use best attack. Now, you can switch this off. Which then, if you stood still, you'll chop. If you move side to side, you'll slash. And if you move forward and back, you'll stab. Um, so you can sort of mix it up. If you've got a weapon like, say, the dagger or the iron spark sword where... Or even the Iron Shard Axe, where sort of slashing and chopping and stuff doesn't matter too much. You know, it either does a similar sort of damage and you just want to stay away from thrusting with the, uh, the, ship, the axe. Whereas with the spear, you've only got the thrust, so you're just going to want to keep pushing forwards, which may not work out so well for you. Iron Mace, on the other hand, again, sucks at thrusting, but it's roughly the same with chop. And we haven't actually shown that yet. Now, ultimately... Let's see what have, what have I got in blunt. 40. So it's slightly less than the long blade. Um, and I need to find another mud crab to kill. There's one. So again, we'll head over. You can see this in action. So again, it only took two hits to kill. And we were hitting a lot more frequently, but not as frequently as with the long blade. Now, a lot of this should be fairly straightforward. It's nice, simple. The more skill you have, the more frequently you hit. The higher your agility, the more frequently you hit. Your strength determines your damage. Your endurance determines your hit points. And a, a variety of different abilities to put, determine your fatigue. So strength, willpower, agility, and endurance all benefit your fatigue. And your, your, your percentage of your fatigue does affect the, your percentage chance of performing any skill. Uh, be that hitting something with a, uh, a nice sharp weapon, or trying to barter for better prices. Now, if I rest up, I'll demonstrate Adrenaline Rush. So Adrenaline Rush counts as a spell that you can use once a day. So the first thing you'll notice is our health's increased by 15. Our fatigue's massively increased. That's what, another 150, I think. Uh, our strength, agility, speed, and endurance have all increased. So we literally just, well, we two shot the, the crab. There we go, one shot at that time because we gave the uh, shock damage a chance to take effect because it does take one second for the damage to apply with the enchanted weapons you see there one second on touch cast when strikes cast when strikes one second on touch cast when strikes one second on touch now so three hits taking off three point obviously our enchant skill the higher we get that the less it'll use on better items that have more charge and use more charges to do damage. So, go back to options, turn on, always use best attack, because that's just the way I prefer it. You might prefer to do something different. And we've got this bonus for 60 seconds. It looks like I've killed everything around here. Let's go find something else. Got some mud crabs. 
Let's go fight the squib. Because squibs can paralyze you. Unless, of course, you one shot them. Ah, there's another one. Let's see if I can get it to paralyze me. So I attacked it, it's aggroed onto me. And it, well, it tried to paralyze me and I resisted it. <sighs> Not useful. Not useful at all. But paralyzing, basically, you are stuck there. You can't do anything. You can't drink potions. You can't change weapons. Absolutely nothing. Now, essentially, that covers it. This is a a really short really simple video so I've showed you spear how all the different weapons act um, maybe see if I can get a block off see if I can if I take the dagger out again aggro the uh, the crab and we'll see if we can show block in action so I've missed I'm just gonna stand here and let it attack me so the damage is being mitigated by my armor skill. And I'm literally, I'm not holding the controls, not, hold, not touching the mouse, not touching the keyboard. I'm just stood here. And eventually, it will proc a block. So it's missing as well because I've got a high agility. Well, high-ish agility. So it's... No, oh, I can sit here for a while. Hopefully the block will kick in. Let's move up a bit closer, just in case. So, an armoured skill went up. It's hitting me on an area that doesn't have armour. And hopefully... It'll trigger block. There we go. So it's triggered the block. Let's just kill it. Okay, it's dead. So what happened there was that it attacked me. It managed to roll a successful hit. And then I rolled a chance to block based off of my agility and my block skill. Uh, obviously, 35 isn't that great to begin with, but a successful block did get me 35 uh, XP towards increasing my block skill. Uh, heavy armor's going up. Uh, blunt weapon. Long blades go, gone up by 52% so far. So you get to see that you know as you as you hit things, your skills will increase. Right, I think that just about covers it. Essentially, the, there are hidden dice rolls. It is based off of agility to hit, not the strength. So, if we come over to short blade, it says governing attribute speed. That doesn't govern the the, the melee hit roll. That is all done by agility, as it says here. Affects your ability to dodge and hit targets in melee, as well as your maximum fatigue. So, this is what it is... It is the game is using to determine whether or not you can hit. Strength affects your starting health, how much you can carry, maximum fatigue and how much damage you do in melee. So even if you're using a short blade, you're still going to want to have a high strength and a high agility. Obviously speed also governs the skill, but you're mostly just going to be getting a stat increase from that side of things. It will Speed will affect your, how quickly you attack with it. So you can be, uh, uh, you know, literally just pin cushioning them with the, with a short blade once you get a high enough speed. I uh, think that just about covers everything. Again, thank you for watching. You know how YouTube works. 